Breaking news this morning out of Washington. It's been less than 12 hours since you were on CNBC, Eamon Javers, because I saw you on last call. Uh, you've got some details of a CNBC investigation. You get any sleep? This is involving Credit Suisse, or were you working on it all night? Uh, we've been working on it for a while, Joe. Uh, what's going on here this morning is the Senate Finance Committee is releasing at this hour a new report detailing whistleblower allegations against Credit Suisse, the century-old Zurich-based bank that collapsed and was rescued by the Swiss government and UBS earlier this month. Now, the report alleges that Credit Suisse has been helping American clients hide hundreds of millions of dollars from the IRS despite an agreement to cooperate with U.S. tax authorities a decade ago. Senate investigators tell CNBC they have found 25 American families who have secreted away as much as $700 million in the bank in recent years. And they say that reveals a corporate culture at Credit Suisse that played at least a part in the bank's ultimate failure. I sat down exclusively with two former Credit Suisse bankers who served as key witnesses for the committee's investigation. CNBC has agreed to disguise the identities of the bankers in order to protect them because they fear retaliation from the bank. Our interview was conducted in the weeks before the bank failed. So what secrets did you turn over to the Americans? Well, I'm specific about an, an American family that over years, years and years and years um, hid their money in Switzerland and did not comply with their, uh, with their taxes. And you knew the name of the family? Correct. And you knew how much money they had? I knew the money they had, I, 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 I knew the accounts were all numbered secret accounts that were named by Italian cities. Code words were Italian cities. Were Italian cities. In 2014, Credit Suisse pled guilty to aiding and assisting U.S. taxpayers in filing false tax returns and agreed to pay a $2.6 billion penalty. At the time, the bank pledged to comply with American tax authorities in the future. But the Senate Finance Committee today says the Swiss bank didn't do that. Instead, the committee alleges the bank engaged in a long-running scheme to hide American assets by switching the nationalities of some U.S. taxpayers to other countries. Back in 2014, Credit Suisse executives told senators on Capitol Hill that they had cleaned up their act. We have proactively taken steps to require that only those U.S. clients who establish compliance with U.S. tax laws can be clients of our bank. That was a lie. Why do you say that? Well, they testified that they were 100 percent compliant. They testified that they've gone through all the accounts and they no longer had a problem. Not only did they have a problem, they had a very big problem on their hands. How do you know that? Well, I know that because I've seen firsthand what they did. One of the whistleblowers told me how the scheme allegedly worked, by making sure wealthy American clients got second passports so the bank could justify counting them as foreign and not American accounts. So you're talking about Americans who hold two passports. Correct. They open the Swiss account in the foreign passport, and they just put their American passport in the pocket and their IRS obligations in their pocket. Exactly. Senate Finance Committee investigators obtained emails from inside the bank. In one, an American client who is the heir to a $200 million fortune hidden inside Credit Suisse writes to his Swiss banker. The subject line of the email reads, U.S. citizenship renounced. And the American says, attached is a confirmation letter I got in the embassy. I just tried to reach you. Congratulations, the banker replies. This is a big step for you, and I know it was not easy at all. Hear you soon. The heir to the fortune replies, thanks. Hopefully this should also make CS now more relaxed. He closes with a smiley face. Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden told me it's not clear how much, if any, secret American money remains in the bank as UBS takes over. But he said he wants the U.S. Department of Justice to take another look at the bank's 2014 plea deal, which he says gave the bank a penalty discount for future cooperation. It is still going on. As of just the last couple of days, even more money has been found to have been concealed. And there are very substantial issues here. So I'm not taking anything off the table. But clearly, it's time to prosecute and ensure that there are penalties that send a strong message. 
Now, we reached out to Credit Suisse, and a spokesperson there told us Credit Suisse does not tolerate tax evasion. In its core, the report describes legacy issues, some from a decade ago, and we have implemented extensive enhancements since then to root out individuals who seek to conceal assets from tax authorities. Now, to be clear, the two Swiss bankers we spoke with here do have a vested interest in what they're saying. Under U.S. law, whistleblowers to the IRS stand to receive between 15 and 30 percent of anything the U.S. government collects. Now, these two secret bankers stand to potentially make millions of dollars in that case. And in that case, U.S. taxpayers would potentially recover even more. Back over to you guys.